Hey, it's Jeff Gibbons here with a getting started video on Reason as a rack device. So I'm going to assume that for this video, you've never used Reason. And what I'm going to do is just give you an overview of some of the virtual instruments that are in there, and then also an overview of how to work with it inside your DAW. I've got a little project here that's just got some instruments from Reason in it. So all the patches you're seeing here are from Reason 11, and a lot of them are from the suite. So let's start from scratch. I'm going to make an instrument track, which is the way we do it in Cubase. And all I'm going to do is choose the Reason Rack plugin from my list, hit Add Track. And then in here, I am going to choose my instrument. So this is the Reason Rack plugin. If I click this little button right here, I get the browser. So this is how you find sounds in Reason. Obviously, if you click on your Instruments tab here, you can see all of the available instruments that you've got. And here at the bottom, you're going to see either, if you have the Reason Suite, you're going to see this Reason Studios category of rack extensions that are now included with the suite. And then at the very bottom, you'll see the other extensions that you have purchased yourself. And these rack extensions to me are probably one of the most exciting things about this new version of Reason because it opens up the rack extensions that already exist that people have made just to run within Reason. Now anybody can use those rack extensions. This is an example right here. This is a JPS harmonic synthesizer and it's designed to imitate the sound of people like Jean-Michel Jarre. So classic 60s, 70s synthesizer sounds by the pioneers. So let's just go over some basic concepts to get you started. You've got your instruments right here, and what you need to do is just drag an instrument right on top of another one if you want to replace it. So I could take this Europa and drop it on top, and now it's a Europa patch. Then what I need to do in the browser is click on this little folder button anytime I want to browse patches. So as long as this is orange right here, I can go over to this list and I'll see the list pop right up. I can go look anywhere else for patches if I've got other ways of finding sounds for that device. So I can click right at this top thing here and I can go down to Europa and I can see the different patches available to me and I can try them out. Uh, let's try a rhythmic patch. If you find a, a patch that you really love, let's say you're going through this and you find a patch that you love. Let's try this one right here. And let's say you love that patch. Well, you can then drag that into a favorites list. So I could drag that into my new favorites list or I can make my own favorites list right here. Let's call this best leads. I drag that into there and then now once I click on that category we'll see that patch show up as well as any other patches that I love. So it's a really good way to create favorite folders for yourself. And so as you see we've got drum machines, we've got a loop player, we've got synthesizers, sample manipulators, other synthesizers, and then another drum machine and then a couple more samplers. So each of these devices, those are the ones that come with Reason. So back to the top now let's look at the effects. Over on the effects side, we've got all of the Reason effects as well. We've got a vocoder, which we don't have in Cubase, and it sounds really good. So I've got another video which I could link to right here, which will show you how to work with the vocoder in Reason. You've got things like reverbs, and the Neptune is a pitch adjuster, so you can actually tune vocals and things like that, so it's kind of an auto-tune. And that is something we could put by itself on an audio track, say a vocal track, we could put the Neptune pitch adjuster and use that for pitch correction in our DAW. All of these effects are going to be added to your available effects inside your DAW. Let's just figure out how to try some of the wiring. So if I had this device right here and I wanted to put an effect on it, I could click on the effects tab and I could go to something like the Scream 4 distortion. All I gotta do is drag it down at the bottom, and now if we flip the rack, we'll see that this device, the wires, have gone straight into the Scream 4 distortion, and then now the distortion is going out to my 
DAW. So it says audio out to host. I can turn the rack back around and then now I can hear that distortion. And I can even browse presets for distortion as well. So I could go to like a warm saturation. Let's see what that sounds like. And then I can bypass it with this little switch right here. Plug it right in and then this effect gets applied to it completely. So that's an insert effect. What about some of these utilities? So if I go over to say this utility right here, let's, let's undo that by the way. So let's undo all of that, those changes. So we're back to just this synthesizer and I'm gonna go over to utilities and I'm gonna drag in a spider audio merger and splitter. So I'm gonna drag this in right here and then I'm gonna drag a mixer. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn this thing back around, flip the rack and I'm gonna take the audio output of my synthesizer and I'm going to put it into the spider audio merger and splitter. So I'm gonna take this one signal left and right and I'm gonna output this to a mixer. So this first one goes to audio input one and this one goes to audio input two. So now I flip the rack over again and I know that I've got two different versions of this synthesizer running to channel one and channel two. So now what I could do, so if I press play, we hear everything just like normal, but I'm gonna pan this to the left, I'm gonna pan this one to the right. I'm gonna turn the rack back over and I'm gonna drag in some other effects. So I'm gonna go back to my effects. I'm gonna to go to, let's go to the distortion and Right now, it's going to automatically hook it up to the sends and returns. If I want this device to be brought in and not have the wires automatically hook up to anything, all I have to do is hold shift down when I drag an effect in. So if I go over to effect and grab another effect, let's try uh, demolition. Hold shift and drag it down and it's not going to get wired into anything, which is what I kind of want here. Because what I'm going to do is instead of going from the spider audio merger into this audio input, what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-hook these up. I'm going to put this one into the scream and the output into channel one. And then I'm going to put this one into the pulverizer and the output into channel two. So now let's turn the rack around. And basically what I've got going on here is on the left side, I've got one going through the scream and on the right side I've got one going through the pulverizer. So let's see what that sounds like. So all I'm showing you here is how easy it is to wire stuff once you get your brain around these the wiring of these devices and you'll see how complex you could make a combination of devices within one single reason rack patch. Underneath the utilities, we've got the players and the players are ways for you to hold down one note and have it play chords or play through scales that filters the information and it only allows you to play in a certain key. We've got the arpeggiators and the note echoes and then we've got a couple other players that come with the Reason Suite. Now the players don't work as well in your DAW as they would inside Reason itself. Because in Reason itself, you could take the scales and chords and you could apply them to a track. In your DAW, you are just going to be running your MIDI information through those players in real time without the ability to take what it's creating, the MIDI that it's creating, and put that onto a separate track. So the last thing I want to show you is just automation of the different parameters in Reason. So most things can be automated in Reason. All you have to do is go to your virtual instrument and with this one here, what I'm going to do is just going to automate this filter. So you just need to turn on automation for the device within your DAW. And in Cubase, we just hit this W right here. And then now I can just start moving that knob and it will write the automation. So let's have a listen to this. So now I've done some automation. It's not a very dramatic filter, but let's go over to the automation lane in Cubase. I just hit this drop down menu and then I go to the first changed parameter and I can see that is rotary number two, which is this knob right here. And then of course I can see the information 
I can go there within Cubase and I can start, I can just draw it in if I want it to be exact, something like every other bar it goes up and down. So something like that. And then now let's watch the filter. You see it coming back. So that's how simple it is to, to automate parameters within Reason. So basically you can think of Reason as just a gigantic patch library. You know, it's got a whole bunch of different devices, but once you start getting your brain around how these different controls work on one device, you look on another device and you realize, you know what, this is actually uh, fairly intuitive. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to navigate Reason as a rack plugin. Once you learn the different ways of working in Reason, you can sort of look at any new device and start to make sense of it, you know? And once you learn about the, the wiring at the back, you start to figure out how you could take different patches and combine them in ways that nobody's ever thought of. That's what's so fun about the Reason environment. And the more I dig back into it, the more I'm reminded of why I love Reason in the first place. So I am really stoked about the new version of Reason. I think it's a great deal. And I think if anybody owns a version of Reason, it's kind of a no brainer to just go upgrade and pay a little bit of money and get a lot of instruments. The new instruments that come with the suite are really good. So there's a lot of really cool sounds in these new extensions that come with the Reason suite. If you're into electronic music or soundtrack production, I think it's definitely worth it. So. Stay tuned for more videos in the future. I'll get more details on some of these instruments and maybe start reviewing some of the extensions that I've never explored because this is opening up a whole world to me again. Anyways, hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching.